Welcome back. Um, so I promise you, keep this quick, and we will. So you know, we've got about five or six minutes to tea, so we'll just keep it uh, uh, very fast. Um, so uh, welcome back from the park, um, and we're going to invite uh, Rachel, Kieran, and Mel to give us one minute, one, one minute each on uh, a kind of, uh, may not be a summary of what was said, but, but what kind of struck them as being particularly important. I will then offer you a two or three minute summary um, and then we are done and then it's tea time. Okay, so yes, hooray. So, uh, okay, so that's it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, Rachel, do you want to go first? Thank you. Really, really exciting park bench. Fantastic, really good. Lots of energy, everyone jumping up and down to get on the park bench. Very good, very proud of you all. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, one of the key things that we talked about was keeping it relevant and not making it too rarefied. There was a discussion about actually is this discussion, is the kind of things that we talk about in this room as a self-selecting group of digital leaders too rarefied for your average CEO? Are people, have people caught up with us yet to be able to really understand what we mean? So that was one thing. Um, talked a bit about incentives for change. Why should a CEO make any change? It's, it's easier for them not to do anything. It's a difficult conversation with their boards. It's a problematic thing to change. So actually, is it easier to do anything? What's the incentive? What's the burning platform? Is there a burning platform? We had a really interesting discussion about actually STEAM as opposed to STEM. And the concept that actually the arts and sciences as a... Uh, as, as a mixed discipline, if you like, are completely part of our legacy, our heritage in the UK. It's a very, very British thing. So why aren't we making more of that? That instead of trying to uh, compete on STEM with countries that are going to be better at STEM, let's be uniquely placed to lead on STEAM, because that's where our experience really comes in. Um, another thing which slightly links to that is why in uh, education are we focusing totally on coding now? Why aren't we focusing on digital literacy more generally? Because if what we're finding is that businesses don't understand why digital matters to them and why it's important, then focusing on coding in schools is not going to solve that problem. Great to have a whole new generation of developers, but actually, is that going to solve the problem? So clearly, uh, don't make the change seem too challenging. World is changing. Organisations need to change and adapt. but. People are at very different stages, and it is still going to take some time before people catch up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, so uh, they say small is beautiful. We had a small group. Uh, actually, we ended up just sitting around the little circle, not a park bench. Uh, so there were five of us. Oh. Yeah, a little guitar. Yeah, had my sandals on. Um, so uh, I guess the headline that came out was. Sorry. Um, so I guess the headline that came out for us was don't be the department of no, uh, don't uh, hide behind processes, reach out to the business, look out to the business. Um, we, we made an observation that uh, famously the CIO, CTO role is often quite short lived, which is uh, a bit of a tricky one when you're trying to change hearts and mindsets uh, over a long, long term because that's how long it takes. It can take a long time. So uh, what basically we, we try to work out, well, when can this person be successful and that's usually uh, if they stay very, very customer focused. Uh, we heard a great example of uh, the CIO from Eurostar who uh, was, has his office next door uh, to St Pancras and whenever there's a problem with any of the systems, he and his team go over there and they find out what the users are doing and what they're struggling with, which I thought was brilliant. Stay customer focused and really just <coughs> align your organisation to do that. So work with everybody and you can use the customer, um, the argument about let's serve the customer as a way of driving that change. So those were the main points, really. Thank, Thank you. Um, well, we, oops, I'm so sorry. Just nearly tripped over. That would be good for the end of the day, wouldn't it? Woo! Sorry. <laughs> um, we talked about everybody and everyone. And I think what's really interesting, it's very hard to have a conversation about everyone inside the workplace. I think we actually veered outside the workplace as well in terms of talking about communities and customers, which I think you know, in itself is an indicator. Um, some of the things that were discussed, I think one of the things that were discussed is it definitely is we have to be responsible about changing our own mindset. But the reality is that there is a divide when we think about behaviour. Because we think about our personal lives, we actually have changed the way that we live and the way that we behave. But actually we haven't quite realise that internally inside the business. That's something that we need to think about. Um, and another one was when we talked about engagement, I think a very good point was we, we don't really truly engage everybody inside the organisation when we think about engagement. And when we think about service design, 
do we actually place enough value or importance on that concept of behavior, uh, engagement and individual user value, when I'm talking about internally, enough at the start of that service design? Um, and then we talked a little bit about, so what can we do about it? And I thought it was really interesting, three things um, came up. Um, one was is to actually enable and empower more connecting inside the organisations, so whether that's the use of technology, allowing people to have more diverse conversations or whatever, but the very concept of connection. So let's actually think more about that and put more empowerment there. The other thing was, let's think about user journeys from an employee perspective end to end and so that was really really good because a lot of the time when we think about you know user journeys we probably think about customer journeys or product journeys but think about that internally and then one of the other things as well was to create interest and engagement um, why don't we actually think about a percentage of time in everybody's work environment where they can dedicate that time to doing things and stuff that really interest them and seeing how much value can come out of that and also more engagement. So that's really what came out of it for us and it was really quite, we could have, I think we could have gone on but there was just a huge amount of value so thank you to everybody for coming to the park then. Thanks so much. For the